little is really known about the American Indian or what links the human soul with the earth. The Indians believe that this land was created for them by the Great Spirit and that it would be theirs forever. The New World, this is what the white man called our land, but it was not new at all. The Red Man, inhabitants of America for centuries. Dene, Dene, the people, the Navajo people. This is their land, Dene Nation. Anasazis were the first people to occupy this canyon. The ancient ones, as Navajos call them, were here until somewhere around the 1500s. Nobody really knows what became of the Anasazis, but their spirit is still very much a part of this place. Legends have it that the Navajos arrived here around the 1600s and were first introduced to the horse by the Spaniards during the early 1700s. This led to fighting and raids against one another, Indians against Indians, and Indians against Spaniards. The U.S. Calvary were finally brought in to end these numerous conflicts. after being kept in captivity for four years in Fort Sumner, the historical long walk occurred. Four years later, in 1868, the Navajos, with the help of their first leader, Manuelito, signed a peace treaty with the United States government, and this land, their land, was designated a reservation, the Diné Nation. coal deposits are located underneath the reservation. 
The elders of both the Diné and the Hopi opposed the mining of the coal on the grounds that it would result in the destruction of the sacred Black Mesa area. In the 1920s, a corporation was established, which was called the Tribal Council. The Department of the Interior resorted to all kinds of maneuvers to see that members of both tribes who would go along with the signing of mineral leases were elected to the council. Under the terms of some of these leases, the return to the tribes for 1,000 tons of coal was $150. Practically none of this pittance ever reached the people. Special interest groups convinced Congress in the 70s that unless they passed public law 93-531, there would be a war between the Hopi and the Navajo. The passage of this bill, the Hopi-Navajo Land Settlement Act, resulted in the relocation of some 10,000 Diné. Almost overnight, hundreds of miles of barbed wire fences sprung up on the reservation, separating people from their pastures, their water, their families, and their shrines. All those on the wrong side of the fence were ordered to move. Pauline Whitesinger, was the first to resist. When I was young, we moved in circles around the big mountain area. We used to live with a lot of people around. When I was growing up, we had a lot of elders around. Back then, people used to die of old age. People don't die of old age anymore. Today, you can hardly see any elders around. They have all passed away because of the relocation. We have received letters of harassment about the policies that say we must relocate. They tell us that if we don't comply with the law, we will be sentenced to prison. We think that what they are telling us is wrong. They tell us that the National Guard is going to come and forcibly remove us from our homeland. We have a mine just a few miles up the road. From the mine we have smoke and pollution, and the wind current carries it down to us. From all the pollution, our life and health is affected. We know what the smoke does to our body. First it affects your lungs, then you get sick. The water in the streams down in the canyons where we feed our animals are also being affected. Also, the natural springs are polluted and contaminated. The color of the streams are changing to red. You can see it. Because of all this contamination from the mines and exhaust from aircraft overhead, I don't think there is any safe place on this planet for people to live. At this time, this is all that I have to say. Their prophecies state that when the land is no longer cared for, all the people will disappear from the land. An environmental impact report prepared by Peabody Coal Company justified the use of 1.4 billion gallons of water annually simply transport coal through a slurry line. This process makes the water unusable for any other purpose. The report states that such use has no impact whatsoever on the environment and asks for the right to continue this practice indefinitely. Meanwhile, rivers, creeks, wells, and water holes are drying up in the aquifer itself 
is being rapidly depleted. The Dene feel as much a part of their land as the trees that grow on it, the river that runs through it, and the animals that burrow in the ground. All living things, everything is sacred to the Dene. Their unity with nature is evident by the fact that they see everything in the beauty way. Jane Biakadi explains the situation at Big Mountain. We didn't realize that people were putting up fences until Pauline Whitesinger went and confronted the fencing crew working around Big Mountain. After that, the full issues began to surface about fences crisscrossing all over our homeland, dividing the area which we used to occupy. We are the people of Big Mountain. Nobody came and notified us that there would be fences running through our homeland. It happened as quickly as one blinks their eyes. It was like a nightmare, and many people and livestock suffer concerning this issue. Today, there is no vegetation, no water. Where shall I go from here? Silversmithing is highly valued by the Navajos, and their work reflects the beauty of nature. Among Navajos, turquoise is a sign of spiritual wealth and well-being. Turquoise, a special stone that carries powerful energy and can bring good luck to the person who wears it. Unfortunately, some of this work has been prostituted by the Belagan, the white man mass-produced and sold as Indian-made, when in reality, it wasn't Indian-made at all. They have given so much and received so little. They wove the patterns of Diné life into the patterns of their rugs. And this is a tradition that lives on today. Our mothers and grandmothers take wool, then cart it, spin it, and weave it, and make rugs. Nijone, beautiful work from a beautiful people. These rugs are highly valued today and are one of the main ways we are able to exist in a money economy. It takes many years to learn this art form from your grandmother. Each rug is different from any other. Rocks and ancient plants are used to color the yarn, which comes from our own sheep. The designs are sacred and mean special things. Once grandmother spider woman wove the earth into existence. Blue Canyon. You won't see it on any maps or in books, but this was the first Indian school on the reservation. It was built around 1890. The Diné children are being pulled between two worlds, between two ways of thinking and two ways of living. The nature way of the Diné and the money way of the Belagana, the white man. 
Many of their youth drift towards the money way, but others are now calling for a return to Navajo tradition. Only a few are able to preserve the values of the one while meeting the demands of the other. Here at Church Rock, New Mexico in 1979, there was a spill of atomic waste material at a uranium mine. An earthen dam gave way, and hot sludge flowed into the Rio Perico River, polluting it with radioactive waste. Naturally, the radioactivity was highest near the spill, which was on Navajo land. The Diné were never told. The water table and thereby the wells and water holes became polluted. Later, most people being relocated by the government were sent to these polluted areas known as the New Lands. your mother, to give her your love, to promise to care for her, and offer a prayer that she continues to care for you. To breathe is to touch your father air, and to receive the breath of life, the same breath that carries the pollen, which you blow toward grandfather's son as it rises each dawn and towards each sunset, saying, Grandfather, here I am blowing the seeds of life back to you to thank you for giving them to me.
Their legends tell how their gods, the Holy Ones, gave them the lands lying between four sacred mountains, a land they should care for forever. The Diné are an important part of the American heritage and their culture, art and outlook is a rare and vanishing world treasure. The Navajo reservation is mostly in Arizona but reaches into Colorado and Utah encompassing some two million acres known as the Four Corners area. Dene Nation.